This is at the point where some people are inside hell, may Allah protect us from hell, and some people are inside heaven. So the decision's already been made, and this scene is of someone who made it into heaven. And so, فَأَقْبَلَ بَعْضُهُمْ عَلَى بَعْضٍ يَتَسَاءَلُونَ They start meeting with each other. Hey, wow, you made it too. And they're hanging out with each other, and they're asking each other questions. So, how was it for you? Man, Judgment Day, that was scary stuff, right? And they're having all kinds of conversation. And one of them, he looks around at all these familiar faces, and he says, قَالَ قَائِلٌ مِّنْهُمْ إِنِّي كَانَ لِي قَرِيلٌ I used to have a friend. He's remembering some friend of his that he remembers from this life. And now they're not here. Where did they go? I don't see them here. And so and he, then he remembers some of the conversations he used to have with this Qareen back in this life. And he says, يَقُولُ أَإِنَّكَ لَمِنَ الْمُصَدِّقِينَ Do you seriously believe this stuff? Do you seriously believe in this heaven and hell stuff? But even more than that, sometimes close friends, one of them says, hey man, let's do this. And one of them says, no, we have to fear Allah. It's not right. What we're doing is not right. Allah will ask us about it. We're lying. We're not being honest. We're doing something Allah doesn't want us to do. And the other person says, are you serious right now? Oh, you're like a believer? Seriously? That you're better than everybody else? You know? Are you really gonna drop the Islam card on me now? Can you not be religious right now? We're all, we're all Muslim, okay? We got it. Allah understands. Just do it, man. Why are you making a big deal? Why are you even making a big deal out of this? It's okay to, if you try to remind that close friend of yours, no, but you know, judgment day. Right, judgment day. Okay, you wanna give the khutbah? It's not Friday, okay? So you hear this kind of response. And he remembers those kinds of conversations. And he literally says, he used to say to me, are you seriously, you know, confirming? Or are you seriously believing all this stuff? Yes, I know. When we are going to be reduced to bones and decayed dust, then we're going to be raised again and everything we did is going to get asked about God and I heard the khutbah about Judgment Day too. Thank you very much. And this person gets to heaven and he's, at, he's reminding themselves of these difficult conversations that he used to have. And then he asks all these people that are sitting in this new company of Jannah. He says, Hal antum muttali'un? Would you like to find out what happened to him? Would you like to inquire? Nobody else cares. That's his friend. So nobody, people keep drinking their drink and eating their food and asking other questions. And he says, so nobody else is wondering about this? Am I the only one who knows about him? I'm the only one who's asking? So he asked Allah. فطلعه. So he sought to find out. Now the thing about Jannah, heaven, is that you get whatever you ask. So he desires that he wants to see his friend that he can't find. And you can already guess from the kinds of questions his friend used to ask, he didn't make it to heaven. And now he wants to see his friend. But to see his friend, Allah will have to show him a picture of hell. So Allah says, describes, فَرَآهُ فِي سَوَاءِ الْجَحِيمِ It is as if a window is open in heaven, and he can look inside, and he can see his friend, or his qareen, his associate, this person of his, in the middle of hell, in the middle of the roaring flame of hell, jahim. Actually comes from juhum, which is when the pupils of a lion dilate before it's about to eat you up. That's actually called juhum. And when the fire sees its prey, and it gets, you know, exaggerated, it gets aggressive, that's when it's called jahim. Now, this is a person you cared about your whole life. So you would imagine the moment you see them, you say, oh my God, can I help you? Can I get you out of there? I have to help you. None of that happens. This person sees their friend and says, Qala tallahi, he says, I swear to God, I swear by Allah, tallahi is different from wallahi. The Arabs from thousands of years ago, when they swore by anything, they said wallahi. But if it's, and they would say wallahi even for casual things, like wallahi, I'm so hungry, I need some chicken right now. No problem, they say wallahi, no problem. But tallahi is used when you're shocked. Tallahi is used in extreme cases. So it's like the, it's wallahi on steroids, is what tallahi is. And so he says, tallahi, I swear to God, in kitta la turdain, it is as if you almost made me fall off the cliff too. Man, I came so close to sticking with you all the time that when you're going into the wrong direction, I was tempted to go with you. So instead of worrying about how he's doing, the first thought that comes in your mind is, man, you almost got me too, bro. You almost had me. And the words turdin irda is used when someone is pushed off a cliff. You almost pushed me off the cliff with you. Then he says, Lawla ni'matu rabbi lakuntu min al muhdarin. Had it not been for the great luxury and favor of Allah, I would have been among that group of people on Judgment Day that had to present their explanations. Muhdarin, ihbar, when you have to stand up, stand before Allah and present, explain every one of your deeds. You know what that's telling us? The people of heaven, when they present their book of deeds to Allah, you know what Allah Azza wa Jal describes? Asawfa yuhasabu hisaban yasira. Allah will give an easy audit, easy checking. Like they'll like they'll turn to page 75. I think there's a hajj here. Could you please? Give me credit for that one. And the angel says, no, you get it. It's okay. You can go. They're not going to go item by item. 
for the people who go into heaven. But the people who go into hell, people who are in trouble, they start getting, so what happened on this day? What were you doing at 3 a.m.? What was this? Who were you with? What were you talking about? What did you text? What did you say? What did you do? What did you eat? What did you drink? And the Prophet ﷺ would describe, The person who starts getting interrogated on judgment day has been destroyed. So this guy's in heaven, he sees his friend, and he says, man, I was almost in the list of people who have to stand and explain themselves. Thank Allah, I was from those who Allah went easy on, and He gave them an easy hisab. And it would have been because of you, that I would have been on the wrong list of, you know, Minal Muhtarin. And then, he doesn't want to see any more of that hell. Please close that window, I got my wish. Thank you very much. And he's in heaven, right? He's in Jannah. But the shock of seeing hell, even for those few moments, was so powerful, that this person, when that window closed, before this window opened, they were in heaven. After this window closed, they're still in heaven. But they can't believe it. It's like they just got here. It's like all the luxuries of heaven disappeared for a moment. And it's like they just got here. And they say, Afama nahnu bi mayyitin. We're really not going to die anymore? Seriously, we're, we're okay now? Illa mawtatana al-ula wa ma nahnu bi mu'adhabin. And we're not, except that first death we already had. And no more torture, right? No more torture? Nobody talks like that in Jannah, do they? Nobody gets to Jannah and says, we're not going to get tortured, right? A few minutes ago, he was hanging out with his friends, sharing drinks, asking about how life used to be. But when he got even a little glimpse of hell, and he came back to heaven, all he can think about is getting over the trauma of seeing what he just saw, even in heaven. And he's saying, we're not going to get punished anymore, right? This person now in heaven says, Inna hadha lahu al fawzul azim. This, this is the great success. The great, he didn't call the drinks and the company and the food and the mansions and all that great stuff. He didn't call that success. You know what he called great success? Escaping a terrible friend who was leading him down a dark path. Not becoming of those who have to be presented in, on judgment day and have to explain themselves. Man, I escaped that? That's the biggest success. No more death, no more punishment, I'll take it. I wanted to share this with you because every one of us in this life have two kinds of qareen. One kind of qareen is a devil. It's a shaitan. We can't see him. He's there all the time. He's done a PhD on you. He studies you. He knows when you're the weakest. He knows exactly what your temper is like, what your temptations are like, what your weaknesses are like. And he knows exactly when to whisper to you when you are in your weakest moments because he has studied his enemy. You know how in sports, opposing teams, they study the other team's strategy? This guy is one devil assigned to you. He's your kareem. So at Qaf, he'll be described as a kareem. This guy is with you your entire life. Your entire life. No psychologist has you figured out like this Qareen does. And his job is to push you to do the wrong thing all the time. All the time. All the time. And when he succeeds, judgment day will come and this Qareen will say to Allah, Rabbana ma'atraytuhu, walakin kana fi dhalim ba'id. I didn't make him do it. He was lost. He's confused himself. That's one kind of Qareen. But every one of us in this life also has another opportunity of Qareens, human Qareen. And they can be good or bad. That's up to us. Who did we decide to tie ourselves to? That their opinion becomes our opinion. Their influence because becomes something we obey. When they ask us to do something, we just do it. We don't think about the consequences. We don't, we're afraid to say, Allah, I know you want me to do this, but Allah does it. No, I'm not going to say that because they'll get upset. You're okay with making Allah upset, not okay with making them upset. That's a Qareen too. And that's the kind of Qareen that's helping you and me get pushed off a cliff. And they may not even know it. They may not even realize it. They're falling off a cliff and they don't see it. And when you open your eyes and say, hey, come on, let's wake up. You can't do this. They say, no, no, you shut your eyes also. Let me sleep and you fall asleep too. Let's fall off the cliff together. You have to figure out and I have to figure out who is that Qareen in our life. And we don't have to hate them. What I'm saying is the devil is the devil. Human beings aren't necessarily devils. They're not necessarily evil. Maybe they don't realize they're playing that role. Maybe they're so lost themselves. Maybe they're listening to their invisible Qareen so much that they're actually hypnotized. And your job is to lovingly, lovingly try to pull them. If they're not willing to budge, then you have to learn to cut that rope. You can't get dragged. You can't put yourself because we have to be the kind of people that make it into heaven. And I pray we don't have to ask about a Qareen who ended up in hell. But if there was such a case, we have to be able to say, Ya Allah, thank Allah, I cut that rope before you jumped off the cliff. I'm glad I, I cut those ties. And this is the time to cut those ties, not then. This is the time. Or this is the time to fix those things. Find the courage to say what's wrong, even to the people that are closest to you. Because you're afraid of making them upset, and you end up, and I end up, disobeying Allah, that's okay. Making that upset is okay. Making Allah upset is not okay. Then who are we fearing? Truly, what, how do we say that we fear no one but Allah? How do we get to say that? And we're afraid of somebody else's feelings towards us. It's okay to be offensive for the sake of Allah. It's okay to hurt somebody's feelings and speak the truth. You don't have to say it in hurtful ways, but speaking the truth will hurt some people's feelings. And that's okay, because their feelings are worth less to you, and Allah's pleasure with you is worth more to you.